What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever Believe Land Prep High School Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Sleds. With me tonight is my co-host. He is the high school sports manager for Believe Land Media, Joe Yule. How you doing, Joe? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy to be here, Kevin. I mean, I'm I'm excited. I'm a coach myself. And, you know, week one's here finally. You know, no more scrimmages, no more <laughs> seven-on-sevens. We got real football, man. I'm I'm stoked. Yep, it's time for Friday Night Lights this week. No, yeah, most definitely. I mean, we got some good games on slate this week. I'm excited. Some are turning champions. Some people who fell a little short. I'm excited to see what we got cooking this week. I, I know we got a crosstown rivalry kicking off. Yeah, we're uh, gonna we got Division One Elyria Catholic kicking uh, Elyria kicking off, going against traveling to their crosstown rival Elyria Catholic. You got something on that? Yeah, well, Leary has won the matchup the last two years. Uh, they were 6-5 and five last year. Uh, they did lose their their quarterback, Desmond Whitfield, and their top running back, Andrew Palos. But they've got a couple good running backs, uh, Lance Glover and Jaden Gilbert returning. They both combined for over 1,100 yards and 13 touchdowns. And uh, pretty nice defensive back, Jalen Brown, had three picks last year. Uh, and then Elyria Catholic, they were 11-3. and three. They had a good season. Their quarterback is ba- back, Brady Cook. He had an outstanding season, 2,190 yards and 21 touchdowns. <laughs> their, uh, their running back is also returning, Levi Ellis. He had 1,675 yards and 27 touchdowns. Amazing wow. season out of him. And then uh, yeah. their top wide receiver, Colin Ginley, is also returning. He had almost 600 yards and six touchdowns. So they have a pretty potent offense. Yeah, I hope we see that. Maybe, you know, maybe see a little bit of an upset. You know, it's always cool seeing that underdog story. And, you know, it seems like there's no better time for that to come underneath those lights on Friday nights. Yeah, that's a big rivalry game. So that'll be a a good one for sure, as always. Right. You know, staying on the west side a little bit, we got a Parma matchup with Padua um, hosting Holy Name. That's a little bit of a rivalry. They play each other week one just about every year. Um, They actually saw each other twice last year, though. Um, Holy Name beat Padawa both times. So, you know, I definitely think Padawa's got a mentality where they're just going to come in and they're just, you know, they're just going to be scrappy and want to go get that dub. Um, Holy Name won the first matchup last year, 20 zip, and they ended up finishing their season seven and six. This Holy Name squad, you know, I coach at university um, and we scrimmaged Holy Name. And I mean, they got some dudes on that team. You know, they got they got some guys on that team, big returners. Um, You know, they're going to be returning a guy who caught the game winning touchdown, Andrew Cole. Keep a number out for number 13 from Holy Name, guys. I mean, this kid can play. I'll tell you that right now. He can play. So I'm excited to see that. Padawa's returning uh, their quarterback from last year and also their top running back. Um, They're going to return Marquise Hall. He actually threw the ball twice in their first matchup. he went two for three with 12 yards, but he also had 19 carries for 126 yards in just one game in that playoff game. Wow. Um, and then Tyler Tuse, I hope I pronounced that right. He went <laughs> seven for 12 with 105 yards and a touchdown. And so, I mean, I'm excited for that crosstown rivalry. You know, there's nothing better than when you get the town coming together and, you know, they get their sides and they just go at it like dogs. Yeah, um, I told you I'm a little familiar with Holy Name. I went there my freshman mm-hmm. year, so they've always been a football school. I remember uh, playing on the freshman team, and we had freshman JV and varsity, and all stacked <laughs> to the limit. Yeah, they, did, so. they run a phenomenal program there, so I'm excited to see how that game turns out. I mean, I'm really excited to see how Andrew Cole responds. You know, they're going to have that kid's number. He's a three-sport athlete um, over at Holy Name, at least a two-sport I know. Um, basketball was a big sport of his as well. So I'm sure we'll be mentioning his name a few times when we get to that time, that time of the year as well. So I'm excited for that game. I mean, I, and then we got another juggernaut Ohio school, St. Ed's. They're going to be hosting Toledo Central Catholic. So we got Northwest Ohio versus Northeast Ohio. What do you think about that one, Kev? Oh, that's huge. I mean, obviously St. Ed's, everybody knows who they are. They're, they're a perennial powerhouse, 15-1 and one last year, defending state champion. And I think you mentioned uh, before the show that uh, their coach, uh, Mr. Lombardo, said that this may be his best team he's had. Yeah. I'm gonna, that's crazy to think. <laughs> I mean, as good right. as they are every year. Exactly. <laughs> With the history that he's had at that school, and he's saying that this might be the, one of the best teams he's had. That's insane. You know, that's crazy. And Toledo's got no scrubs on their team. I mean, they're a solid school. You know, they get a lot of Toledo talent in the area and surrounding areas coming out. 
for their, you know, academic prestige, but also their athletic prestige. Cause that, you know, they got a very juggernaut basketball program, but also another juggernaut football program to go along with that. And so we'll see how these two, you know, Northern Ohio programs stack up against each other in this week one matchup, because both these teams have a very tough schedule in the future. Definitely. But so, yeah. We got, a, we, we got a game that uh, uh, we're, we're a little familiar with. We've got the mm-hmm. Middlefield, Middlefield Cardinal at seven and four traveling to Garrettsville to play the Garfield G-Men. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Joe and I are both <laughs> alumni. Joe played quarterback at Garfield. So we're a little familiar with them. Um, yeah, Garrettsville lost. Uh, they lost a lot this past year. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> they they lost a lot. You know, they just uh, they had four kids sign to go to go to college and do play sports at the next level for that class. Um, Brody Sogonski played quarterback for them. He signed at Walsh. Um, I'm gonna talk with him. You know, he he's uh, he's in camp right now. Anthony Dema, who was an absolute animal, um, he signed at Ashland. He's playing there. Um, and then Peyton Yancey signed at Thomas More University down in Kentucky. He's playing line down there. And then uh, their, you know, pride and joy, the glue of that team, really, Riley Laporte. Um, he signed at Kent to be a thrower there, actually. So, you know, they lost a, they, they lost a, a whopping class, but they're, you know, they're also returning a lot of talent. And, yeah. uh, you know, they're, they're a leader, I think, this year. And uh, Eric Geddes and Keegan Sell. Yeah. And uh, Cardinal, you mentioned uh, before the show, uh, Ethan Detweiler, a running back who was injured most of last year, but uh, is healthy and he's looking to make a big impact and somebody they expect to play at the, the college level once he once yeah. he graduates. Yeah, no doubt. I was talking to Coach Brody a few days ago. Um, you know, he he's he's high on Ethan, man. You know, he 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 loves his mentality, um, loves everything the kid's about. He's just a hard worker from what we've heard. And, you know, we're excited to see this kid bounce back because you never want to see a misfortune in any sport, any athlete, or anybody in, in that matter. So, you know, we're excited for Ethan. We're excited for those Cardinal Huskies. But, uh, you know, Kevin and I are both, you know, G-Men alum. And, you know, it, you know, we'd be fools not to tell you that we don't want them to win. Right. They had an outstanding season last year, 12-1. and one. We mentioned they lost Anthony Demma over 2,000 yards and 35 touchdowns. And, defensively at four interceptions so he might he was a stud on both sides of the ball mm-hmm. and then of course losing Brody a quarterback they'll be replacing him but they they have their their returning three-headed monster at linebacker uh Carter Bates had seven sacks last year Keegan Sell 189 tackles 22 for a loss <laughs> and five sacks is that and a school then, record uh, yeah and then Jesse Grace had 103 tackles 14 for a loss and three sacks so that's that's probably going to be the heart and soul of their team this year that defense yeah, most definitely. That linebacker core is stacked this year. Um, you know, I, I'm really excited to see how they turn out, how those guys can, you know, um, how, how they can really adjust to and, you know, overcome a barrier of the fact that, you know, they lost a lot um, and see how that team can respond to um, losing a lot and just making sure that everybody knows it wasn't a fluke that, you know, that they're, that Garrettsville's here to stay and that, you know, they're, they mean business this whole entire 2022 season. Yep. For sure. So what do we have next? We got Streets Bro and Gerard. All Gerard's right. traveling uh, to Streets Bro. You know, another Portage County team. Um, you know, Streets Bro. They've they've they produced some pretty good talent out of their school, but it seems you know it seems like they always fall short being a tough PTC conference over in the Metro Division. Um, actually, I mean, wow, it slipped my mind. You know, with how long it used to be, but it's the only division of the PTC now. <laughs> um with the with the league part you know dispersing right. uh so you know they're over in the ptc they got gerard you know it's a it, it's going to be a battle to say the least you know they in the past years they you know michael hall he's a 2020 grad from streets bro he's at ohio state right now um and he's he's doing great things there he actually just got his black stripe taken off at ohio state camp so that's awesome to hear yeah. but you know i'm excited to see how how Streets Bros offense comes out with this firepower because they've always been an offense heavy team. You know, in the past, you see them lose games, um, you know, like 60 to 55. <laughs> and, you know, like you wonder if there was even a defense on the other side of the ball that was just all offense on air. Um, and so, you know, I'm excited to see how Streets Bros offense is because they're always out. They're always in the gun show, always in the gun shows. And I'm excited to see how their defense matches up against Gerard's firepower offense. Yeah, uh, Streetsboro won the matchup last year, seventy to thirty-five. You talk about that high-powered <laughs> offense. Right. There, there you go, seventy points right off the bat last year. 
Uh, they did lose their quarterback, Mason Klimak, had 19 touchdowns and only three picks last year. Uh, Preston Hopperton, the running back, returns. He was third in the league in rushing and, and first in receiving yards, actually. Uh, but they did lose two of their top defensive linemen on defense. And you look at Gerard, they have their, their two-headed monster quarterback returning this year. Uh, Michael Palmer, the running back, ran for almost 1,200 yards. And uh, Connor Strain, a defensive back, led the league with six interceptions last year. So should be a pretty wow. good matchup week one. Yeah, no, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for all these all, all these games coming up. And, you know, we talk about how elite that Northeast Ohio football is. And, uh, you know, high school football in Ohio in general, is there, you know, there's just a different mentality to it because for a lot of these kids, you know, this is, this is what they hang on to in life. You know, this is what they, this is what they love. This is, you know, this is what they do. And, you know, speak, you know, you speak about how, how elite it is. We're really going to see how they can match up against an out of state team here. When we talk about this Fitch team, this Austin town Fitch team, they're going to host Foothill um, from Nevada. And, you know, Foothill, you know, they, they got a, they got a coach who's been there for four seasons and he, last year he went five and three, still dealing with COVID protocols and things like that. Um, some of their stats last year is, is that, you know, they averaged about 23 points on offense every, every game last year. And they, um, they their defense gave up almost 27 points every year. So, you know, they got to shape that up a little bit going, going against an Austin town team. That's very, that's a very solid team this year. And, you know, Foothill doesn't play any scrubs, you know, like they opened up their season last year and this season with uh, Bishop Gorman, who's a perennial powerhouse in the in the national rankings every year. If any, if any of you Ohio State fans that are listening to this, remember a guy named Tate Martell. Um, he's actually from Bishop Gorman, you know, so and, you know, if you if you understand how high high school football is, I mean, he was a he was the number one dual threat quarterback in his recruiting class. Um so, you know, they, they, they don't play any scrubs around there. So that five and three record, you know, those three losses are against three tough teams um, for sure. So these Foothill Falcons, they're going to have their hands full um, dealing with Austin Town week one. And, you know, Foothill only returns two starters on offense, and two starters on defense. They're young um, and that, you know, that shows a promising future for them. But I'm excited for this pitch team, you know, so, you, you know, they're, they're going to have their work cut out for them. And, you know, they got a head coach who's in his third season. Last year they went seven and four and they're, you know, they're a spread based team. So they're, you know, they're going to try and spread the, spread the foothill Falcons out. And, you know, it's, it's a really good thing for Fitch in this way. They return seven starters on both sides of the ball. So that, wow. you know, that's huge going into this, you know, out of state matchup and, you know, Fitch doesn't play any scrubs this season. You know, they have a solid, they have a solid schedule this upcoming season with, you know, foothill. They, they got Ursuline. They're going to have Bennett from New York traveling into town as well. In um, week five, they play Mass. They have to travel to Maslin, Washington. They got to travel to Wadsworth. Then they got. Then they have to host Boardman and Harding at the end of the season. So yeah, you know, like we got a lot of powerhouse teams that we're going to be talking about this week one. You know, sticking with that with Fitch, St. Ed's, you know, Streetsboro, Holy Name, all these big time schools. When you talk about perennial powerhouses in Northeast Ohio, you can't forget, you know, Maslin, Washington. I mean, that's, you know, that's a juggernaut every year. They send yeah. kids. I mean, they send kids to Division One. They send kids to the league for that matter. Um, you know, I don't know if old Ohio State fans want to remember Devin Smith. He, um, you know, wide receiver for Cardale Jones in that, in that, in that national championship run. Um, he's from Maslin, Washington. They also recently in 2020 sent Caden Clark to Alabama he just transferred to Akron so you know week one the Tigers are going to be bringing in Cincinnati Moeller and Moeller is another juggernaut team in Ohio for sure no question about it last season this Moeller team went 11 and four, 11 and four and you know they're they're going to have revenge in their sights because they lost in the semifinals to Springfield Springfield being from Dayton area Springfield is actually playing St. Ignatius this week one, which is another big game. And yeah. so, you know, a little history between the two teams is in five years right now, um, Maslin is 26 and 30 against them. So they have an under 500 winning percentage against this Molar team, uh, this Molar coaching staff. Now in playoffs though, Maslin has lost in the last four appearances, which one was a semifinal loss in 2021. So, you know, we'll see how that plays out. And, 
you know, I'm excited for it. I think that, that, you know, there's a lot of big returners for Moeller and a lot of big returners for Maslin Washington that we're going to see. And, I, you know, I'm just excited to see how these two teams fare off with some Division One talent right at our at our eyes to watch. Definitely. So we've got the uh, Solon-Hudson matchup week one. Mm-hmm. Um, Solon had a down year last year. They were four and seven. Um their biggest win on their schedule was probably Mentor, who also had a pretty down year. They were they were only five and six. They're usually a a pretty big uh, powerhouse in Northeast Ohio. Uh, Hudson won the matchup last year, forty nine to six. Uh, their quarterback Jagger Pally returns. He had a big year, twenty two hundred yards and twenty touchdowns. But they they did lose a lot on offense. Their two top running backs who combined for almost two thousand yards and thirty one touchdowns, and their two top receivers who combined for sixteen hundred yards and thirteen touchdowns are all gone from that. Hudson offense, so they're they're going to be looking to replenish a lot there offensively. Yeah, no doubt the explorers are definitely going to be exploring, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, 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 they're going to be looking for their for their next guy. Um, Hudson's young this year. Solon's Solon's young, but you know they have a heavy junior class from what I've heard. So you know a lot of those guys. You know, you talk about a down season for Solon last year. A lot of those guys were getting their first pile of varsity minutes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's tough when that happens. You know, I've been in programs, I've seen programs that have had that where you have a very promising future and, you know, sometimes it just doesn't pan out how you want it to. And that obviously happened for the stolen comments last year. So I'm excited to see the comments and explorers go toe to toe with each other and, you know, see how things play off. But, you know, we've been talking about all these, you know, big time schools and all these, um, you know, these division one, division two, three schools and, you know, forget about what the route is sometimes to high school football in Ohio. And that's, that's your small town where you got, you know, 70 kids maximum on the team. If that, you know, 50 probably. And, you know, you're just, the whole town shows up for every game. And, you know, that seems to be what's about to happen this week one matchup for Berkshire uh, hosting Cuyahoga Heights week one, you know, last year, these two teams faced off against each other and Heights won and double overtime though. They won 38 to 35. So it's not like it was a blowout by any means. And, you know, we're, I'm excited to see this. Berkshire lost last year to, in week 11 in the first round of the playoffs to Crestwood. And Heights lost last year to um, Warren JFK in the first round as well. So, you know, none of these teams definitely for them got their seasons cut short. Um, they're both returning in their regions. Heights being Division 7, Berkshire being Division 5. They're both returning. Um, Berkshire loves their power eye package and just, you know, they're going to dive the hell out of you until, <laughs> until you do not, until, until, until they don't want to do anymore. And that, that's on their clock. They will run, you know, they'll run play after play and just run it up the middle and physically impose their will against you. So, you know, we're, I'm, I'm excited to see how that game plays out. I'm excited to see how Heights comes back firing, but, you know, Berkshire is definitely going to have a revenge in mind. And they're going to have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, most definitely. So I'm excited to see how that plays out. And, you know, speaking of the CBC, we did a fall preview that you guys will see here shortly on Crestwood, who was the 2021 CBC champs. It was their first year over in the CBC after leaving the PTC after that conference kind of dispersed in a way. Yeah. There's still about three teams in that league. But, you know, Crestwood is going to go travel to Rootstown, who's an old PTC rival for them. What do you got on that game? Yeah, well, first of all, I would be there live in Rootstown covering that game, so looking forward to that. Um, Crestwood, as you said, CBC champs. They were seven and four last year. Uh, Rootstown was five and six. Uh, Crestwood won the matchup last year, twenty-eight to seven. Um, as far as Rootstown goes, they lost their quarterback Brandon Nicholas, but they do return a couple senior running backs and Cody Coons and Brandon Bobs. And uh, Crestwood, the uh, the Blasios, they lost, they lost Luis. Uh, they're running back from last year as well as their quarterback, but uh, younger brother Nate's ready to step in this year. Uh, he, he's one of the guys we interviewed for the previews. So you'll, you'll be seeing that, like Joey said here, uh, in the next couple of days. And uh, they also have a couple of returning receivers and Jonas Honeycutt and Noah Baker. So they're looking to, to make some noise in the CBC again and, and defend their title. Yeah, you know, I, def- I had a chance, you know, like we said, to talk with, uh, you know, Mr. Blasioli. And, you know, he, he had, he had an amazing mentality about and, and just how he held himself as a player. Um, so I'm really excited to see how he can fill his brother's shoes. Cause Lou was a great player for Crestwood. And, you know, I, you know, I, there's nothing more that I love than just some hard nosed Portage County football. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, there's, 
there's a different type of it because you know nobody's truly like you're not going to you're not going to see a dude probably go to Ohio State when you go watch a you know a Portage County game you're not going to see a dude go sign to Michigan for that but you're going to see a dude who just loves his guys next to him and who just who wants to go you know 110 percent every single play and is going to give everything that he has because he grew up with these guys you know his parents are probably good friends with these but you know with his parents and you know it's just it, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a cross portage rivalry you know Crestwood and Rootstown they they have a history together back to you know Logan Toot and Caleb Cout days um so you know these coaches uh, you know they're gonna have their work cut out for them for sure and you know I'm excited to see how it is and, you know, make sure you guys, if you see Kevin there, you know, say what's up and, you know, cause he's going to be reporting live there and we're excited to, you know, we're excited to see how the Crestwood Red Devils kick off their season. Yeah. It's, it's exciting for sure. And I'm looking forward to it. You know, our first year of coverage, um, <clears throat> we're not going to be able to cover as many games as, as we want to initially, but uh, hopefully we continue to build that up and uh, get more coverage out as the season goes along. Um, Want to give a shout out to to Ruben Rodriguez. He was uh, one of the co-managers of the high school sports with with Joey's. Unfortunately, having some health issues and has to step away for a little bit. So, uh, a shout out to him. Hopefully, he gets healthy and, and returns to us soon. Uh, he was going to be part of this podcast as well. So, uh, shout out to you, Ruben. Get well soon, and uh, we'll, we'll get you back on the team here as soon as possible. But yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's an exciting first week. There's a lot of good games, you know. Plenty we didn't even get to touch on, but uh, we'll be we'll be posting every week, every Sunday night. We'll be recapping some of the bigger games, and uh, we'll have some stuff in store, some some players of the week, and some awards we're going to give out. So some pretty exciting stuff we're looking forward to bringing to you guys. Yeah, and I you know I definitely want to shout out the fact that for a lot of our high school stuff, where you know uh, you know we'll give them a little bit of a shout out here. You know, Daystar Ford and Garrettsville, we're going to be working with them a lot with the high school stuff and. You know, so you guys need anything, you know, definitely go talk to go down in Garrettsville and go talk to them at Dave Star Ford and, you know, see what's popping over there. Um, you know, we're excited to be working with them. We're excited for this high school season to get going. And, you know, I'm I'm just stoked, man. You know, I'm I'm, I'm ready for my team to get rolling. Um, and, I, you know, I'm just I'm ready for it. You know, it's game week, man. I can't I, I can't be, <laughs> I, I can't be more happy. You know, it's like it's like being a little kid again. Right. Um, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing like high school. There's nothing like high school football in Ohio, especially in Northeast Ohio, because there's nothing like high school football in Northeast Ohio. It's juggernaut, man. Yes, it is. All right. So, uh, we will talk to you next Sunday. This could this coming Sunday when we have our, our game recaps and, uh, good luck to you, Joe, with university and your, your first week. Yeah. Down in Columbus against Columbus Academy. We'll, uh, Definitely going to go business trip, handle our business, and we'll be back up in Northeast Ohio in no time. All right, guys. We will talk to you Sunday. Enjoy the games and have a good week. Thanks, guys.